started, I hope you'll be able to understand everybody, even if you don't understand me. Uh, welcome to this meeting of the League of Women Voters. I'm Susan Irvin, coordinator of the League. And we meet here the second Thursday of every month to uh, have meetings of, of interest to citizens of the county. And we would invite you to continue to come meet with us. Next uh, month in May, our program, we're actually going to see a film which is called Inequality for All. Um, Nancy Scott told me about this and had a whole of it. And uh, this is a film about the increasing income disparity in our country. It's the greatest that it's been in many decades. And we've all heard about the 1%. You know, this is some of the statistics and causes and uh, explanations for that increasing income disparity. So we hope you will be with us next month. We will start right at 12 because the film is close to an hour and a half, and, uh, so we'll have to get on. We welcome you all today. This is always one of our most well-received events when we have our local candidates come in to talk with you, and we appreciate so much for taking their time to be with us. Um, <laughs> um, we have uh, two districts with county commission seats open for this upcoming election. District 1, uh, there is one seat available. And we have running for that seat Jim Tate, who is the incumbent a Republican. We have John Searle, who is a Republican. Um, and we have uh, Roger Michaels, who is a, uh, Michael Rogers, I'm sorry, who is a Democrat. <laughs> Uh, for District 2, there are two seats available. We have Ronnie Beal, who's an incumbent and Democrat. Uh, Ron Havens, who's an incumbent Republican. Gary Shields, Republican. And John Martin, Libertarian. And you will select two of these gentlemen for District 2. The way we run this uh, forum is that we start off with some kind of general questions. They go to all candidates. They have given the same amount of time to answer each question. And uh, Christina Lynn, who is sitting right here, we all can see her, is our timer. She will let you know when you have 30 seconds left, she'll hold up a little piece of paper. And then when it's time, she'll hold up the sheet and set your time. So that's how that works. We put some pieces of paper and pens on your table. Uh, with any remaining time after they answer these general questions, we will be taking questions from the audience. Uh, we do written questions because we want to focus on the candidates' answers rather than getting to be uh, conversational as debate from the floor. Uh, so do write your questions, and your questions should be addressed to all candidates, not to just one. If you have a specific question, for a specific candidate, you need to nail them down after this. So, um, yes. Gosh, but Christina, could you wave things at people? Oh, yes. 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, so the two prepared questions I have, I'm going to read both of them to you. So if you have remarks you want to make, you can divide them up between the two questions. And then at the very end, you'll each be given a couple of minutes to say anything that you didn't get a chance, you know, that we didn't cover in the general question. So our first two questions are, number one, introduce yourself and focus on uh, the ways you are quali most qualified for this office. And that will be just like a, a two-minute question. The times do have to be short on these because there's seven of them. So two minutes to introduce yourself and focus on how you are most qualified for this job. The second question is to tell us what two or three issues are most significant to you to take action on or for you to hold on. What is different about your positions or your approach from the other candidates? And I will repeat these questions as we, when we get to question number two. But I'm going to start with question number one, and I'm going to start down on this end with Mr. Sherl. Introduce yourself, focus on the ways in which you're most qualified, 
for this all. Two minutes. You can stand or sit as you prefer. Whichever you want. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm John Sherrill. I'm the Second District 1 Board of Commissioners, State Department of Health Life Commissioner of Tate. Uh, I am married to a native Highlander girl. We have three sons, Alan, Michael, and Jared. My daughter-in-law is Sarah Kinsey Sherrill, and I have one grandson named Cameron. I am a uh, 1987 graduate of Franklin High School. I am self-employed. I own, I own and operate J and J Long and Landscaping Services in Highlands since 1988. In 2012, I opened Cheryl Produce in Otto. I'm a retired firefighter from Highlands Fire and Rescue. I've been very active with Highlands School. I'm a former assistant Highlands High School baseball coach. I have, uh, I ran Little League for many years in Highlands. I was president of that. And I was on the, uh, the board for the Bushes Club at Highlands High School. And, um, and currently I'm serving on the Wake County Planning Board. And, uh, and I have filed for uh, this seat because I have great concern about government spending and, um, and government debt. We can't, in my opinion, we can't do a lot about the nightmare financially in the federal government and state government, but we can in our own county government. And so I filed to uh, try to take a stand against uh, excessive spending and debt. Thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. I'll try and get by without the microphone. Again, I'm Jim Tate. I'm a Republican candidate in District 1. I'm a fifth generation Maconian. I'm married to Allison. We have two children, Ethan, who is 11, and Eliza, who is 9. Uh, they both attend Highland School. I'm a graduate of the University of Georgia. And since I graduated and moved back home, I have been a constant volunteer advocate. Uh, from church to hospice to fire department uh, to various boards, from planning boards to advisory boards, uh, you name it, I've tried to get my hands dirty with it, uh, so to speak. Uh, but uh, I want to be the commissioner because I love this county. Of all the places in the world that I can choose to live, I've chose to put my roots down right here, and I've chose to watch my children grow up right here, just like the generations of my family before me. And I want to do the best that I can to help improve this county, to do what's right, to make common sense decisions, and to be responsible. And I think that's what you'll find with me, and I hope that my record that I've been serving so far will, uh, will show that. And I guess we'll tap into some of these other questions as we move forward. But uh, that's the gist. Thank you. Okay, can everybody hear me out there? Uh, my name is uh, Michael David Rogers. They call me Bud. And uh, anyway, my wife is uh, Tina Rogers in the back. Stand up, Tina, so people can see who you are. I've been married to this state for 32 years. And uh, I was born and raised in Holland. We both uh, we graduated there. And I we both went to Holland High School. We graduated there. We've been there 52 years. I have been up there. 52 years and uh, I've been in the paving business, I've been in the uh, sewer business, the water business, the landscape business, and the blasting business. And uh, anyway, I've got two kids, uh, both of them graduated from Highlands High School, got one that just graduated from Western Carolina University, and another one is a junior there. And uh, anyway, we're just, uh, you know, I want, I want to try to, to bring, uh, what is, I want to try to bring jobs to make the county, to be able to help the county, so that people can. Uh, you know, be able to uh, get a decent job and be able to work here without having to run up and down the mountain. And I also want to get the water cleaned up, you know, the Cold Central River, the sewer out of the, out of the water, and, uh, and to get, you know, our water back the way it needs to be. And that's my two primary goals is jobs so and get, get the water dealt with. And uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's about the just really. My dad's Larry Rogers. He's been uh, in business uh, for, you know, his entire life right there in Highlands. He's never left there. And uh, anyway, we're just here to try to serve and be able to help the county to, uh, to make it better. Thank you.
My name is John Martin. I'm a candidate in District 2 for Macon County Commissioner. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting the forum. Uh, it is uh, a commitment to do these types of things. I want to thank all of you who attended. Uh, you no doubt could be somewhere else doing something else. So I want to thank you for attending. Uh, my reason for filing, and in fact, I would have preferred that I didn't have to file, but I felt like it was a calling to do that. Because given the county spending, and again, I do not disparage our commissioners, any one of them, I believe they all have good motives. Uh, I think that the bottom line is when you go from a different perspective of bigger government to better government, uh, you're going to get more spending. And our budget has increased substantially over the last several years. And if you look at the total spending, uh, we probably will approach $50 million uh, this budget year. Uh, compared with just a couple of years ago, 40 million. Our situation with our reevaluations, which is in process, and all of you are probably aware of that, are you not? Well, basically, and, and the timekeeper is telling me I have 30 seconds, so let me hurry. But the the basically the reevaluations are going to going to force uh, some some drastic either tax increases. Uh, next next budget year and the following year, or some cuts. I believe there is some uh, some fat, some waste that we can cut. And I do question in one department where uh, bonuses were granted equal to 80 percent. And you can check this out in the finance department. My time is up. But bonuses of $133,000 and salary of 167000 Thank you very much. University, received a BA degree there at Western Carolina University, 
And you may agree and uh, guidance and counseling, University of North Carolina Charlotte, School Administration. I spent 37 years in education, 29 of those years in Macon County, and 21 years, my last 21 years, as the principal of Franklin High School. What I've done, I retired in 2010. This is when I've been involved since I retired. <coughs> Presently, I serve on the Maine County Board of Education. We have about a $40 million budget. We're working through now. I'm also with the Southwest Community College Board of Trustees, another large budget. I serve on the Angel Medical Center Foundation Board as Chairman, Kids Place Board of Directors, Franklin Chamber of Commerce. I went off that in December 2013 after uh, being on the board for three years. Uh, I also work with Tourism Development Commission, and I'm a Rotary, and I think we're fortunate enough to make the county to have a lot of city groups. Again, I'd like to say thank you, and I uh, appreciate you both coming over. I'm Ronnie Bell. It's been my pleasure to work with the citizens of Bacon County for eight years. I'm asking to be elected again in this election. I'm still married after that eight years. <laughs> Same one. Uh, for 34 years, up and all my children, they're all out of college and working. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think the question is what qualifies me for the job is uh, the reason I ran in the first place, and that's to enhance what we have in Macon County, the services to our citizens, what we need to do to increase our citizens. Uh, we can talk about budgets all day and the money that we spend. Let me tell you where I'm at. If you're looking for somebody that does not support law enforcement, enhance our EMS the best way we can, support our things like community care clinic, things that, that help our citizens day to day, and increase the services, whether it be 911, our fire departments, I'm not your person. Because I'm going to support those things. They're the things that makes Bacon County different. I also have the privilege, uh, if Lord will in August, I'll become president of the North Carolina Association of County Ministers statewide. Uh, I look forward to that. It gives you avenues to work with. I was proud to have that opportunity with the support of my board to work to get a dialysis center. And there's many other needs we need to make the county. Uh, we can talk about money and the spending and how much, but we have to see exactly where that went. If you're looking for a person who does not support recreation, I'm not your man. I'm going to support recreation 30 seconds over there. And I'm glad to be here. I think the lady will win the vote, and I can talk for 34 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could give you all more time, but just because it's the number of things there are, and people can't stay all day, but we'll, we'll be having you back in the fall, so we we'll look forward to that. The second question is a little more complex, so I will read it again. And I always kind of mix up the order because we don't always want the same person going first and the same person going last. So this time we'll start with Mr. Park and go through the district two, and then we'll start with Mr. Rogers and go through district one. So reverse that order. Uh, tell us what two or three issues, because you can't touch on everything, are most significant to you to take action on or to hold on. What is different about your positions or your approach from the other candidates? This is, yeah, this is four <coughs> The My major issues have to do with providing services, but as it's been stated, at the best possible cost while keeping taxes as low as possible. Given the reevaluations which are expected by most experts have stated we're probably going to have about a 30% reduction overall in the tax base due to the reevaluations. Uh, Maybe a little bit off of that, plus or minus, but those are some estimates that I think are fairly reliable. Uh, so we'll know when those reevaluations finish what the total tax base is. And then the mill rate will be reset. And of course, typically, what happens in situations like this, uh, again, revenue neutral is the term that's used. Uh, with that, even if you don't increase your budget spending, uh, revenue neutral would require substantial tax increases 
if you continue spending the same amount. Again, uh, services need to be provided, uh, and I am one who supports 100% you know, law enforcement, education, but I think, and, and other things that the citizens of Macon County deserve and should get. But the, the bottom line is that usually the ones who are hurt the most in these types of situations in the county are the uh, ones who can least afford it at the lower end of the spectrum on their property taxes. So anyway, those folks uh, who, whose property values are 100,000 less typically, they're gonna have the biggest tax increases. Uh, typically the larger ones don't have have quite as big an impact and they can afford it easier. I think that's pretty well agreed. If somebody has a half million dollar house, they probably can afford the property tax on it even if you did have an increase. But the ones that I'm most concerned about are the people who can't afford that. The people on fixed incomes, the retirees uh, who have to make tough choices every day. And so I believe that we have to be very careful with the monies that we are given by the taxpayers and spend. This year, our tax revenue was expected to be about $25 million from property taxes, and our budget approaches after all the add-ons, and we won't know for the final numbers until the end of the budget year, but probably close to $50 million. Uh, you say, well, maybe it won't be quite that much, maybe it'll only be 49 or whatever. Anyway, so you say, well, where does all this other money come from? Well, that's a very good question. A lot of it comes from federal and state funds. And a lot of those federal funds are stimulus funds that, as I understand, are going to be ending or, uh, you know, there's going to be reductions, state funds as well. So we don't have numbers yet on how much we're going to get, you know, for the next budget year. But I think it is going to be a, a tough economic environment. And so we are going to have to make tough choices. Uh, again, those things that are essential services, they have to be provided. So, and I am one who supports those essential services. I was at the uh, sheriff and DA's uh, forum the other day at the courthouse, and uh, very, very important, and I don't think they're even getting enough funding in the sheriff's department from talking to Sheriff Holland, uh, equipment issues, uh, some other issues, uh, they're serious, serious concerns. So uh, SROs in the schools, there, there are not enough SROs, school resource officers. So you do have tough choices to make, but I think uh, we can do that, uh, again, if we're very careful. And I appreciate your support. Uh, Myconiansforabettertomorrow.com is my website. And I'll be on the ticket in November. Thank you. I usually don't write notes, but I've got two or three things I want to elaborate on here to get it out. Number one, being a commissioner, I think, takes a lot of common sense. I know that our county has went in debt over the past 10 years. A lot of fun, a lot of belief, but I'm not one for borrowing money and spending if you don't need it. Now, if you do need it, you go for what you got to have. But I say this right here. There's a lot of these people out there who vote this come in November for a person if they're a Democrat or a person if they're a Republican. I like to use this phrase here. If there's somebody walking beside a swimming pool and seeing somebody drowned in it, would you ask the family if they were a Democrat or a Republican? I don't believe there'd be a one in here would you grab hold of them and blow them out there and say, well, that's basically what you got to do as a county commissioner. We're trying to save every dollar we can. We're trying to have everything we can for the people. And so the way that I look at it, I'm not going up there trying to do what a Republican is supposed to do. I'm not going to try to do a Democrat, what a Democrat is supposed to do, but I'm not going to support one of these commissioners here that will waste money. And so the way I look at it is, I want to try to have as much as we can for what we got to spend on. And yes, as Mr. Martin had uh, mentioned, 
they are a big significant raise of what the budget was from the time I took office in 2010 and now. And there's much of that I've not heard before. Let's see what else I want to talk about. Everybody knows what a governor is. We think of the politics of that man down in Rob. If there's a mechanic in here, they know what a governor does to an engine. He lets you get all you can get out of it without blowing it up. If that makes any sense to you, that's where I stand. I want to get all we can get without blowing it up financially. All right, I'm seeing people pushing it on past that governor. And I'm not for it. Let's see. Hey, some of you in here heard this statement that I don't stand for nothing. Well, I don't want to use that word liar. That's not nice. But it's not exactly true. So let me put it that way. For those of you that have heard that, how about going to check the record and see what all I have voted for? Because I voted for school projects. I voted for helping 911, new ambulances, new law enforcement cars. Oh, we only got four minutes. I can stand here and elaborate 30 minutes on what I have voted for. So those of you that's hearing this, uh, Haven didn't vote for nothing. How about going looking it up and see what Haven did vote for and what he didn't. And I'm not going to support people, as I said, that's spending money unnecessarily. I know that when it comes this time of the week to remodel this pool out here, I went out there and looked at it and I pictured myself as a kid and talked to Commissioner Corbin about when we were children going out there and see this bright new pool back then. But then looking at it, it looked like it, well, they'd been using it for a landfill. We got that looking nice and I saw all the kids out there this summer had I support recreation. I think that we voted for $7,500 to uh, Redo our ball fields this year, and many, many more things. There's parts of things that you hear a little bit of, but you don't hear the whole story. I think if you want to make an informed decision of who you're going to vote for, try to find out the whole story and not just a little bit of it. Because if you are making a decision on that, you're losing for yourself. Thank you. Attending some meetings, <clears throat> I'm confused or concerned about one of the goals that we seem to have within this region, within this county, but it's really important, and that's striving for economic development. That's a good thing. But while at the same time, you maintain your culture and heritage, that's tough. But I think as a county commissioner, you have to keep your eye on that. We all know that a four-lane road can destroy culture and heritage. We also know that the industry can destroy a community. But I think as a county commissioner, I'm going to be very sensitive to, I want economic development, but can you have your heritage culture too? Can you preserve that? Can you preserve those two things? Another thing that uh, as a county commissioner, I firmly believe that you're Credit card can't be your savings account. You can't spend yourself out of debt. I believe we have to be good steward of taxpayers' money. I think if we're going to look at the total picture, I think we have to work together as a group and without party consideration. I think we have to work for the betterment of making county. Again, the taxes, that's always a concern. The village rate is always a concern. And the infrastructure, we have to have a conversation about that. You won't have economic development without reviewing your infrastructure, as we have now. And it has to be something that you put on the table. One thing I will do, I'm going to use the word resume. We all know what resume is. A resume beats you to the table if you're applying for a job. But also, every community, every individual, every school, every county, we all have resumes. And it's just a click away. If you want people to come into your county, you want new industry, you want newcomers, 
make sure that your resume is strong. If you follow with me here, the R in resume stands for activation. We have I call it God given recreation. The hiking trails and the lakes and those type of things. And then we have things that we invest in, but recreation is very important. If you look at the E in resume, I am telling you, in blood, I'm for public education. I'm a product of public education. I've seen what it can do for the public. I am a proponent of public education. If you look at the S of resume, that's safety. Everything from your 911 to your sheriff's department to your uh, fire departments, all these different programs you have out here, that's your safety. The U resume stands for underemployed. We want to make sure that we have some people who are working as underemployed, working at another level. When we look at the M, we have become a hub for medical type things. Everything from the VA to the VA clinic, new cancer clinic, those type of things. It's here. We're a hub. You've got to take care of that. You look at your E in resume. As a county commissioner, I will look out for the environment. Thank you very much. There's several things uh, that we've talked about the budget. The average budget for Lancaster County over the past many years has been about $42 million. This year, it has increased. Why? Several reasons. We did make some overall purchases. It's around 47 something is where we're at today. But the average over the year has been 42 million. Now, what does that mean? What that means is your tax rate is basically stay the lowest in the state. Yes, I know we're on 2,000 evaluation. I know that. We're going to have a revamp, and uh, we are going to work towards those things. In the meantime, you should have a strong fund balance in your county. Many years, you have to have 8% by state law, which is basically one month's expenses in your county. That's the law. Many years ago, the county commissioners passed a ruling that this county will not go below 25%. And over the years I've been there, we've not approached that point. Today, I think we're, Mr. Chairman, I think we're around 32, 33, 31. 31%. So we do, uh, so we've been pretty good stewardship money. For the first time in 30 years, you don't have a child in a trailer at a school. I think that's a great accomplishment. For the first time in many, many years, we have looked to the future on economic development, think outside the box. I build houses for a living, one thing I do. So we're looking different. We have an economic development of every morning. That's what he does. Our development center is now full. People, we hope those folks expand and, and create many more jobs. So on the budget, you can talk about uh, the spending. We try to be good stewards of your money. I have a privilege to sit at that board where I believe 10 different commissioners. And there, during that time, uh, we, we've managed for the majority to come to agreement with what's good for the citizens. And so far, it's, it's worked pretty well. And we'll continue to do so. One of my concerns is what's going to be coming down from the state of North Carolina. Real simple. A lot of that budget, if you see that money in, one example that I've been really involved in is the mental health. Uh, I sit on the mental health board now for many years. It's now going to expand from Cherokee County to Winston-Salem. That's going to be the mental health local management entity. This year, just to the sheriff's department, is over $200,000 of our budget to take care of those folks. Now, what does that mean? That means that we have three right now, because we're sitting here in the ER that the sheriff's department has three deputies with right now. You're paying for that time and a half for that time. So we need to work on those things. The governor's pointed me to the coalition, crisis coalition in Raleigh. Uh, I don't know if that's making any success, but I go to the meetings, I promise you. So, and we do have a voice. We have a voice to make a county about those things. Some of the other things that we're getting, nobody in this room, but some of us are getting grayer. <laughs> the average age of making county now is approaching probably around 58 years old. Even though they are, we are standing up taking kids, kindergarten through fourth grade. But as the sister gets older, and 
I know Mark mentioned that it might be more difficult to pay their taxes. We've recognized that for many, many years. I think many more before this board recognized that. So when it comes tax time, we do see where a rebound lands. We don't know where that will be. It could be 20%, it could be 15 We really don't know. Uh, Mr. Lighting came before the board to you tonight with a schedule of values, which you'll have a public hearing on, which I encourage you to attend on the 26th. And uh, you can certainly learn more about that. But some other concerns is our DOT. 30 minutes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in history, we don't have no secondary road money. For the first time ever, there's no secondary road money. We have over 2,000 miles of secondary road, over 110 miles of gravel road made in county. So we're watching those things at the state level. The lottery money, we were guaranteed 40% to come back for, for school construction. We're getting about 20% of time out. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of those things, thank you. You won't need me to repeat the question for this. No, I'll just carry on. I think we're good. Anyway, the things I want to bring to uh, Tamaki County is uh, I want to you know, I want to expand the industrial park up there and bring some business in the town. And then the other thing is I'd like to see uh, Costco uh, move in here so we can be able to go and, and buy something that is affordable. And uh, the other thing is what I had talked about one time is countywide city, uh, it's countywide sewer and water, you know, to expand it out, get, get the water cleaned up. You know, we got those sewer plants in Highlands that, that dug in. I want to see those taken out, put into the Highlands plant, and evaporated, you know, just to get rid of that water. And uh, that's uh, the main things I want to, you know, uh, to direct, you know, try to get done is, is to bring, you know, the jobs here. The other thing is uh, I've been trying to push for, you know, it's been, uh, you know, I've talked about it. Anyway, it's a state park. And uh, this thing is down in the Blue Valley section. It covers Oconee County, Macon County, Jackson County, and Raven County. You got Sumter, Chattahoochee, and Anahua National Forest. And uh, you know they talk about economics. This park, it, it needs to be a state park. Those people that are Raven County, Oconee County, they're all for it. And it'll be a park like no other park in the state of, uh, or in the whole United States. It'll, it'll bring the right people here. And I mean, it'll, it'll funnel them right through here, through our, you know, through our road system. And uh, this park will be one that, that you know, it'll be, it'll be, it's not going to be where it has campers, it's going to be where you have cats. You know, and the Cliffside Lake, I want to attach the Cliffside to it, you know, as a part of that park. But anyway, it'll cover a large section down in here if we can get it, and we want to put that into a wilderness area. We don't need any more wilderness areas. The wilderness area, we, we've got that, we can't do anything with it. This here will bring the people, it'll bring the, it'll bring the money that we need, you know, to do this county, put people to work. It'll just, uh, it'll be, like I said, it'll be like a park, be no other park like it in the, in the whole United States, and it's something that we need, and it's something that that property, uh, it's just set here, we need to make use of it. And that's, you know, that's what I propose to bring. The other thing is in the Highlands area, you know, I've been talking about putting a, a, a rainforest up there. And uh, this thing, what, what, it, what it is, it's all, it's like, there's anybody ever been to the firm bank in Atlanta, Georgia, it's all, it's, it's, it's a two acre deal, it's all on the roof. It's a lot of money. You need to get involved with Clemson University, University of Georgia, Western Carolina, NC State, and North Carolina. It's all about the ecosystem, science, and biology. You know, it's about raising fish under roof, getting, you know, getting our, uh, our creeks and our waves restocked, getting these kids involved with that, bringing in, you know, to where we can uh, raise and, you know, plant propagate plants, have an on site nursery that's, that's on site there, and, uh, you know, get involved federally and, uh, and, and uh, locally, you know, they're invited to be able to get on board to get this thing done. And as far as the water goes, get the water cleaned up. You know, I, I'm going after that money. I want, I want to go out to the state, the federal level, to, to get it out. I'm going to go to the to put it in that's still for water. You know, I, I work in the sewer business. I'm in the water business. I, I see it every day. And I know what it's doing. Our water is, is absolutely killed. That Cold Central River is it's dead. And anyway, it's just a shame that we've, uh, we've sat here and we haven't done anything. That's what my goal is. I want to get the water. I want to get it cleaned up. Not in your instance, I want to go to the federal level to get, to get the money. And that's what I'm all about. I'm an, I'm an environmental person, and uh, that's that's what my goals are. That's what I want to do. I'm about to get in uh, serious trouble for this, but I think it's worth it. Uh, I think we all need to wish Miss Maggie Corbin a happy 22nd birthday. <laughs> earlier, um, I am very, very proud to call Macon County home. Uh, and I hope that all of y'all are as well. Uh, and if I'm re-elected, I'm going to do my best to make sure that we continue to be 
proud to call Maple County home. I'm going to do my best to help keep our taxes. Not, not only some of the lowest in the state, we presently have the lowest tax rate, you know, fifth lowest if we figure reappraisals. Uh, but if you look at the 3,100 plus counties in the United States, we have some of the lowest taxes in the entire United States. And for us to be able to offer the services that we all need, expect, and want, I'm pretty proud of that. And if y'all really like me, I'm gonna do my best to continue to do that, and continue to offer things in an efficient manner as possible. Uh, that's been one of my goals since the get-go, is to make sure that all levels from the Sheriff's Department to EMS, Building Department, you name it, uh, as I've had the opportunity and chance to try to dig into it, make sure that there is no waste, uh, that we're getting the best bang for our buck, and that we're giving you the best possible people to serve you, because uh, that's what we are. We're in the business of serving all of you. I've heard uh, this idea bounce around. You always learn new things during the campaign season, but uh, this idea of, of wasteful spending. I don't know of a single thing that I've voted for that I would consider wasteful. A prior county commissioner, uh, who's now deceased, Mr. Neville Bryson, mentioned to me when he first knew that I was running for a county commissioner from C. He said, Jim, he goes, I know you're going to win one day, and I know you're going to make us proud. But he said, I want you to know something. He goes, and it served me well. He goes, that's every decision that you make. Make sure that you can sleep well at night. And I can honestly tell you, every decision I've made so far, I've been able to sleep well at night. And I'm proud of that. And I'll continue to do that. I will be responsible. I will always offer civil discourse to you, which means I'm going to have open ears, I'm going to have an open mind, and I'm going to have an open heart. And I'm going to listen respectfully. And I'm going to pull all that information, and we'll have an informed decision, and I'm going to try and do the best, not for, necessarily for me, not necessarily for some group over here. I'm going to try and make the best decision for the whole county. That's my word, y'all. Since I've taken office, uh, a few points of pride. Uh, this may not be completely me or completely the commissioners, but our unemployment rate has decreased. Our sales tax revenues have been going up, and our TDC revenues have been going up, our occupancy tax. And I think that's maybe a slight <coughs> sign that we're doing something right. Um, I'm very happy that we've been able to improve a lot of areas without increasing our taxes. Uh, we've been able to do some significant improvements to all of our schools, the sheriff's department, uh, even our like, recent recreation enhancements. I'm speaking quicker because you gave me time there this year. Um, Probably the biggest thing that I'm concerned about moving forward is our revaluation. So I'm going to try and hold the line. I think we need to hold our spending constant right now until we get through this revaluation and we can see exactly where we're going to stand. I don't think anybody can, everybody has guesses of where we're going, but nobody can predict where we're going exactly. And until we can do that, I'm going to do my best to hold our spending at a constant until we can get through this revaluation process. Thank you. I'm Jim Tate. <laughs> um, one thing I'd like to let you guys know, <clears throat> Commissioner Tate, I consider a friend of mine. We've been on the fire department together, as he stated before. We both uh, own and operate a landscaping business. We've always been friendly competitors. Bud Rogers here, he's a friend of mine also. Uh, we all get along great. But <clears throat> when it... As I stated earlier, the reason why that I have ran or filed for uh, county commissioner is the fact that there's no doubt in my mind that Commissioner Tate, in his heart, he has voted for everything in the right way. When it comes to me, I disagree, I disagree with some of this voting records of all this spending and borrowing money. Um, I don't believe in all the government control, the government regulations, um, and the wasteful spending and everything else that, um, as I stated earlier, we don't have much control over the federal level nor the state level, but we do the county level. In my opinion, I would rather this lady right here have her hard-earned money in her pocket 
instead of sitting over here in the Macon County fund balance, when somebody decides that they want to uh, spend a little bit of money on whatever the case may be. If we need uh, uh, to give money to some organization or whatever, we have no control over that, but I would rather you be in control of your life and your finances and, and all that stuff. But since Commissioner Tate was, a, was appointed in 2011 and elected in November 2012, Macon County's budget has increased by millions of dollars. The borrowing has continued. And we still have this enormous fund balance that, and I've said before, that fund balance, that enormous amount of money does not belong to Macon County. It belongs to the taxpayers of Macon County and should be given back to the owners of that money. Um, but <clears throat> with all due respect to Commissioner Tate and the other commissioners, this is the differences between Commissioner Tate and myself. I don't believe in all the government spending, the government control, and, uh, and I just don't believe that, the, uh, uh, that this, this is the proper way that our government should be operating. It, it, needs, to be, um, it needs to be better leadership in there to be better stewards of, of the taxpayers' money. Um, and and the, all I can ask for is I am, or I will tell you this, I have been in business basically my entire adult life, adult life. I know what it is to have a family to support, now two businesses to operate. I wasn't, it was never an option for me to attend college. My family didn't have the money to go to college, but I will tell you this. My oldest son graduated from Western Carolina University. I have my middle son that is in college in Wilmington, North Carolina right now, and I have a 12-year-old at home now at seventh grade in high school, and I will offer him the same option. He will go to college if that's where he so desires, and that is from being a very mindful person watching every penny that I've ever made and ever penny that I speak. And I plan on, if I'm elected to this board, I plan on watching over your money better than I will ever look after mine. And I appreciate your support. If you so uh, feel that I would make a, a good commissioner for Macon County, a good steward for Macon County, I appreciate your support. Thanks a lot. We are going to take a few questions from the audience. Now, what time is it? Is it? <laughs> 12.51. 12.51. Okay. We may, we're going to, we don't want to keep people too long. If I will just take a couple of questions if somebody has them written down. Because uh, if you have a burning question, it's really different. Uh, does anybody have and then I get to choose which one. We have a question here too. <laughs> We're not going to get them all. I'm going to go ahead and read one of these that I think is very important. Um, and I'll ask you just to each speak uh, for two minutes on this. Hold it to one minute if you can, uh, and then we'll, we'll see where we are. Uh, what are your concerns regarding what's happening in Raleigh and how those changes affect our state and county, i.e. voting rights, education, income inequality, health care, environmental protection? And we'd like you to speak on how those things in Raleigh are affecting us and how do you those things? And let's see, John, John, can I start with you? <laughs> in Raleigh, uh, as president elect of the County Commissioner Association, I'm in Raleigh at least twice a month. We're very active. The, the County Association of County Commissioners is all hundred counties. 
We're basically there to look out for the counties and the pass through. Some of the millions, which Cheryl talked about, all pass through money that the state decided to be best for us to handle, not get no cut out of it, but we can be responsible for it. That's through DSS, which is a little clarification there. But some of the things that's happened in Raleigh is, is really different for all counties. And it, and it, if you're looking out of the good stewards of the money, some things that's being passed down to the county is what we're really concerned about. There's 900 registered lobbyists in Raleigh today. 900 registered lobbyists. And they're working hard. The NCACC is a lobbying firm, if you will, but we work on things that affects all 100 counties. What really concerns me in Raleigh is the, is the 80 20 rule. Uh, there's 20 counties now have more legislators sitting for this state than the other 80 counties combined. We're not one of the 20. <laughs> so, as and living in a rural county, we just have to be careful. Some of the things that's coming down, you hear me talk about mental health. Me and Robbie sit down working on his budget. 2013 was over $220,000 just to take care of them. Not to mention what it does to those families. There's been another cut. There's going to be another 2% cut statewide in all departments. Education. Some of those monies that you talked about, 30 acres. Some of those monies you talked about is what we had to supplement out of your tax dollar to our local education system. We get penalized somewhat. Because of the way we're laid out, we've got nine Halen and Hiles, two K through 12 schools, the only county in the state with two K through 12 schools. And as Kevin Gorman said many times in Raleigh, they look at everything, every place is 22 and a half kids. But you've got to gear up Highlands and nine Halen every morning just like Franklin High. So a lot of those things we've had to do, do we supplement our teachers? Yes. <laughs> two of the uh, 400 things are concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> I made mine quick, probably obvious. I serve on the Lake County Board of Education. And education is a high priority for me, public education. I do believe in school choice, but I think we differ at the state level on how pay for school choice. Uh, I think the teachers are the backbone of our community. I think there are heroes. I've watched in over 37 years. And this what disturbs me is I've watched the home erode. I've watched the spiritual setting erode. And all that's got passed in education. That's wrong. You cannot be successful in education as a teacher if you're having to take all, on all those roads. And what happens? Sometimes we get to teach, but work with young people, that's, that's what we're supposed to do. But it sure has become burdensome to our teachers trying to teach with all the societal evils that you're having to work with. One thing, I don't know how to do it. You put the home back together, you put the spiritual setting back together, we'll be just fine. Yeah, I'm going to have to use the microphone a little bit hoarse and ask them to give a speech every morning about three times to hikers coming in here trying to talk to me about where to spend the money here and make the county a lot of Anyway, I'd like to echo a little bit of what Mr. Shields talked about. I've got a couple of twin sons. I don't know if any of them know them or not. They'll be 16 years old next week and my, mine and my wife's 28th anniversary will be Saturday. And uh, I'm very much for education. I've got one of my sons, uh, he's pretty much in, they're in early college, he got his mind up maybe to make an attorney. I hope he's true, if I stay full of politics, I'm gonna need to pay him to help me find out where to live at. I don't know, they're a little scared or greedy or something, so they might have to think that. Speaking of education, I'm very much for it. Something I think that all of us can agree on and we talked about the other night when this bill was the lottery fund. Have you ever noticed that sign says education lottery? Now, 
How many of you folks in here would enjoy getting to be taxed twice for the same thing? Or let's look at it like this right here. If you get a light bill, you pay that light bill. And then another one comes in again. Are you going to go pay that light bill? Well, that's exactly what's happening to us in this lottery fund. You ain't going to give me 30 minutes to talk on this. <laughs> because I think, I mean, I'm greedy about it. I think we should get 100% of that lottery fund right here in our county, whoever spends it. But, you know, we're going to have to say, what is it, 20% now? All right. According to some of the senators, that money that's there is going to pay that debt of uh, unemployment in the past month, correct? Some okay. say that. Some say that. I don't know where it went. I know we need to get it. That's the main thing. But us having to pay double taxes is not fair. I'm not saying I'm not for education. I'm all for our education. But I'm fighting to get that lot of fund for what it's intended for. Read the question again, please. Uh, what are your concerns regarding what's happening in Raleigh and how those changes affect our state and county, i.e., voting rights, education, income inequality, health care, environmental protection? Wow, that's that's a lot. It is. That's a lot of, of issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can say hello and goodbye in about two minutes, that's about it. But basically uh, what's happening is at the state level uh, we're, we're getting cuts is what's going to happen. Uh, even more cuts and federal level uh, we're seeing some cuts. Uh, I think we're going to have more cuts at the federal level. But you have unfunded mandates that come down. Uh, we also have some funded mandates. These, these unfunded mandates especially are a big trap for Bacon County. Uh, as far as education, I do support education. I am a product of education. Uh, and of course I've been to many colleges, attended many colleges including finished at Western Carolina University in 1980. I attended a lot of other colleges too for uh, post uh, backwards work. But the bottom line is that we're going to have to, uh, and, and the lottery funds that we're not getting, uh, absolutely I agree that, you know, we should be getting what we are supposed to be getting. You know, after you pay the expenses, why are they getting to keep all that money? Well, that's, that they have the lawyers, the people in Raleigh who are passing these laws. But we are going to have to, in Clay County, or Lake County, uh, as well as Clay County next door, and all these other counties, they're all in the same boat, uh, basically, with regard to these state, you know, situations and the voting rights that you talked about. Y'all had a program here, a uh, guy came from Raleigh to talk about that. Uh, you know, we have some serious issues, and we're going to have to uh, you know, be innovative about the way that we solve these problems, including in education. So, you know, again, I don't enjoy paying a bill twice. I wouldn't pay a bill twice, but that's what, you know, essentially sometimes happens. Uh, so, again, I will do my best to protect your interest as a citizen and taxpayer. So, November, I appreciate your support. John Martin on the ticket. Thank you. Anyway, as far as education goes, I'm all for education. And, uh, you know, I think that Western Carolina, Western North Carolina, we always get shorted, you know, from all the day. They always call money, and, and we just get the leftovers. And, uh, you know, what I think we need to get somebody here, you know, to, to run. Uh, we, need, we need a good governor is what we need right here from out of Western North Carolina to go and, and bring the money here uh, so we can, uh, you know, upgrade our infrastructure, get our school systems, uh, get these people paid the, the money that they deserve to educate our, our children. You know, it's awful. Funny, you know, these, these, uh, you know, these I'm, I'm a big sports guy, you know, they, they can pay these sports people, you know, $40, 50000000 million, dollars, uh, you know, for a 10-year contract, but we can't afford to pay our teachers to teach our kids and stuff, and I, I just think that we need, we get shorted there, and then as far as it goes, you know, with, uh, you know, with, and, and Raleigh, you know, with all the stuff going on with the uh, food power and the, and the water and all going on here, I think that's an issue that, you know, that we need, we kind of, 
Well, that's kind of been pushed away and when they kind of push it down, that's something we need to look at about the water bill, like, you know, because it's just, it's killing our, our whole state as a whole, you know. And that's one thing that we need to look at. And, um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, uh, education in the school system and everything, you know, just I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, that we need to really, what it is is we need, we're going to have to stand up to get that money. We're not just going to hand it down. You know, they, they just keep walking over us, so keeping us beat down, running us down. And uh, we're, we're just going to have to stand up to be able to get our money. If we don't have somebody here in this area to represent us, then it's never, it's never going to happen. But uh, anyway, that's that's about all I have to say about that. I, I'm all for education. I want to see it expand. I want to see our teachers get paid. And, uh, you know, our county grow as a whole. This question is a prime example of why I'm all in support of our county being a supporter of a lobbying group called the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. As a commissioner, it's real easy for me to call up Representative Roger West. Hey Roger, we've got a problem with this our environmental issue, or we have a problem with this school issue. Or I can text Jim Davis and say, Jim, I've got some problems with this, but those guys only have two votes at the state level. This association helps us pull our thoughts from all these counties together and helps us get it to lobby it with all the representatives and all the senators across the state. I don't have much pull for the senator that lives in Charlotte or in Raleigh, but they control the majority of the votes at the state level. But when we can get involved with a group, North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, and they can help us push the things that are important, for our counties. Number one on my list is being unfunded mandates being sent down to us. Um, I'm proud to, proud to support uh, If, if y'all don't know, Ronnie Bill is the incoming president of that association. Uh, and that can be a major, major windfall for Macon County and the things that stand near and dear to all of us. Well, I'll tell you what I know about what's going on in Raleigh. I've been there three times. My son played college soccer. And I, I think Commissioner Bill is probably the only person in this room that knows exactly what's going on in Raleigh. But I'll tell you, as I stated earlier, the state government is broke. Every single time they raise their taxes, but they keep sending me bills. They want their sales taxes and they want all this other stuff. I went to a speech with Jim Davis. Uh, or I didn't go with him, I was at a speech that he gave. And he was talking about the government of North Carolina passing uh, their budget. And I said, Senator Davis, I said, that's all well and good. I said, but what was the budget? And, it, and I believe he said it was $20.4 billion or something like that. And I said, okay, Senator Davis. I said, what was the budget last year? It was like $200 million less. There's growth in government. But if you look what just happened with the county commissioners not too long ago, a state agency, Employment Security Commission, they have nowhere to go. They don't have to move out of their office. Is that right? They come to the county commissioners begging for money. The state government's broke. As I stated earlier, we can deal with what's going on in Macon County. Let's focus on Macon County. I understand education is, is paid, for, the teachers and stuff is paid for by the state. But one other thing we have to keep in mind, anytime the federal government, the state government, whoever sends us money, it is not free money. There is going to be a tax increase somewhere. And, and I don't know of anybody in this room that cares for uh, 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 having to pay the government any more money. But going back to education and everything, I am all in favor of education and protecting our environment and everything else. But there again, I am not for government control taking away your rights and paying for them to take them away. So there again, I ask if I if you feel that I will be a uh, good representative for Macon County, I'm asking for your vote. Thank you, John Chair. <laughs> like a minute to wrap up, we can do that. Uh, I don't think we need to do it if you just want to say thank you, if we want to say thank you to you, but if there's something that you just didn't get to touch on and you all would like another shot, we'll go around. If not, we'll just close the 
as we are, and all these wonderful questions I have left, I'm all for the press. <laughs> and maybe they will give you all a call and get some of those information. Um, we all do all this. You want to shout? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to minutes? Yeah. Uh, I just want to tell you that it's my privilege to serve as a medical counselor for county committee. I get up every day. There's not many more in this There's not somebody in my office that I'll do and go by there. But somebody's not at my office at 7 o'clock in the morning. I get up every day to do something good and try to help somebody in Lane County, regardless of the policy. If you're trying to help with the Medicaid, if you're trying to help with whatever it is, we will help you. So if you have somebody that will work hard, they have nobody at this table that will have one. I'll assure you. There's nobody that works harder. And I've been for one reason that's for the main county citizens. We have a lot, we're not, we're not a gloom and doom county folks. We're a bright light in this state. And we're going to continue to be so. So I'd ask you to support November and uh, and I'd ask that when you when you choose these counties, be, be careful what you choose. And uh, so we're going to look forward. We've got uh, we've got a wonderful county and wonderful citizens. We've got a lot to be thankful for, and I thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Since I'm the new person on the block, I would like to say thank you for giving us this opportunity. But also, I will give you, I will commit to you my time and energy that I got to. And that was a soul searching thing that I had to make sure that I would commit to you, the voter, of my time the quality time of my energy, and I would definitely, I have the want to be a part of a group of people who, who are looking out for the betterment of Macon County. I thank you very much. A while ago when I was talking about the education, I would love to talk about that we're the highest <laughs> taxed people in the South. For gas, we got a 57.5 cents a gallon of tax on our gas in. Just in South Carolina, it's 24.9. I forget what it is in Tennessee, it's 30 cents a gallon. It's even this year, Mr. Bill was talking about our rural roads. We always hear that that's where that tax money is going to, so I think if we're not going to have any money, Mr. Bill, you need to mention it down there, we need to take about 30 cents off of each gallon of gas so we can pay for that. Thanks very much for giving an opportunity to reach every one of us up here to speak. And as I asked, if I've done good, give me your report card, and if not, then I want it to. Well, as a candidate for Macon County Commissioner, uh, I will do my absolute best to protect your interests as citizens and taxpayers. There are things on the horizon uh, that we're going to be facing such as the Economic Opportunity Initiative, if the county is going to vote that in or not. Uh, that's also known as opt-in. Uh, the Emergency Management uh, Statute that was passed that gives options for counties. Wide sweeping power, additional powers. Uh, there's a, a good uh, article. You, you can actually go to the North Carolina State website and look, look up about all this, but the, the bottom line is that, you know, your liberties need to be protected at the local level. Uh, we need to have, and I think we do have, and, you know, great people working for us uh, in the departments, including the Sheriff's Department and Education. Uh, some people uh, are having a tough time in Macon County. Jobs are uh, tough for many people get. When you lessen government regulation and taxes, typically, uh, this, this is proven throughout, you do get an increase in jobs. Uh, North Carolina General Assembly, uh, when they lowered the tax rate, they also, of course, took away some deductions and so forth. But there are some things that they did in Raleigh that I think have helped the economy some, but there, there are many people who are suffering in the, especially the rural counties, like Macon County, uh, people who are having a tough time on fixed incomes and people who are underemployed and so forth. Uh, and of course, what's happened on the national scene uh, with Obamacare, 
uh, the Affordable Care Act and all those types of things, uh, I think have some impact here. Uh, with the under 29, 29 hours uh, rule, under 30 hours, and the 49er employees. So, uh, of course, Stanley Furniture, oh, she's telling me my time is up. Stanley Furniture, y'all know, is shut down. Uh, I think there's 400 jobs that have lost there. Some people did work there from Macon County, so they're out of jobs. Okay, thank you again, Maconian, for bettertomorrow.com, and November, I appreciate your vote, John Martin, for County Commission. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for, uh, for having me, and uh, anyway, I hope I can get voted in in the, in the November election, and uh, I'll, do, I'll work hard for you guys. I'm a hard worker. I'm a common sense person. I have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, experience in the, in the water, the sewer, the asphalt business. You know, like I've said, I've been, I've been, I've been in business all my life, and uh, I love this county. And you know, and I want to help Franklin. I want to see Franklin going the right way. I was just, uh, you know, being quite honest with you, I was disappointed in that Walmart deal over there with the, those walls and how that looks out toward. They built those nice schools. You got that nice river over there, and you got that. You know, it's just, it's, a, it's an awesome, is what it is, and I, I think that's the wrong way to go, that uh, those guys there's got plenty of money, and you've got to be able to sit down and talk to those type of people, they'll put the money out if you put the pressure on it, because if not, somebody else will come in here and, and build besides them, you know, Walmart's not the only, the, the people that will come here, we can get other people to come. But anyway, I just want to see, uh, I, I, want, I want to be able to, uh, to help you guys, and I, I want to work hard for you, I'm a hard worker, I know all these guys here, I don't know Gary Shields that well, and I, but anyway, uh, I'm willing to work you know, with, with all these people. I will work hard for you, and I'll, I'll do my best to, to bring money to get what we need to see our county grow in, in the right direction and, and bring the right jobs. And that, that state park I've talked about, you know, I want you to really think about it. It's, it's something that we need. It, it's, it, what it is, that's money going out, but that's also major money coming in. And I mean, anything I bring to the table, there's always a return for it. It's not just wasting money. And uh, that's where I stand, and uh, that's, that's something that, that'll really, it, it'll, it'll make this county, I'm telling you, it'll, it'll, it'll head us in the right direction. But anyway, I, I appreciate you guys having me on here, and I love you guys, and I appreciate you. Thank you. As somebody wants to tell me that a politician should never make a promise. Well, I'm about to break that rule, and I'm going to wait for it to you. And that is, as long as I'm in office as a county commissioner, I will govern responsibly. I will act professionally. I will have an open door for all of you. And every decision I make will be well researched and will be for the best of the county. Jim Taylor, thank you. It's time to start again. <laughs> um, I believe in the power to the people and not the government. I believe the citizens of this county ought to be living greater than the government is. I believe that our businesses, I can do this as a first-hand experience. I've had to tighten my belt over the last several years with this down economy. And to me, it seems like we out here in the private sector are having to watch everything that we do. But our government is not having to watch what they're doing. They're able to spend. They're able to borrow. They're able to do everything. With this 8% fund balance in Macon County, that's what the, the recommendation is for the county government. However, it's much greater than that. It's millions and millions of dollars. For all you people, whether you know what it is, it's called a slush fund. As a county commissioner, you can tap into this slush fund anytime you want to and never really have to. Uh, I mean, you can do whatever you want to with this slush fund. That's not part of our budget for this year. So, to me, I think the citizens of Macon County should be doing great and the government should be just barely getting by. <laughs> But it's exactly the opposite, in my opinion. And uh, and there again, if uh, if you agree with me, and would like to for me to watch over. And one other thing I'd like to comment on that was brought up just a few minutes earlier in the 
about the emergency services and all the services of Macon County. I think we all believe in the services and the employees of Macon County. The biggest thing is that we're going to have to tighten our belt as, as the county leaders. We may have to make some tough choices on uh, reducing this budget with this reval and everything. So, uh, and I think I could, uh, I could handle that challenge. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of you for coming and taking your time to talk with us. I thought it was very informative, and that's what we like to see happen here. Thank you all for coming to listen to us. And in the fall, we will be having more forums, so we'll be watching out for that. And you're welcome every second Thursday of the month at noon here for a program next month that will be uh, inequality for all. So join us. Thank you. Thank you.